starting? Yep. There's a bug right here. See that bird? Get him. Yeah, See him? No, oh, he's just, he was right here. Yeah, he may have dive bomb. Yeah, he was going around your mic. You're gonna hear him in the mic, I guarantee. I think we are. Are you ready? Oh, I see? Didn't see him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dead. Yes, he's done. We got him. How are we doing? Can I go now? Yeah. Let's go. How are we doing today, everybody? We just killed a bug. You believe that? Shit? We're right back with you. We just killed a bug. I'm excited. We got a team talk. We've got John boats today, which I call Tiny Tins. Jordan wanted me to call it John Boats, because I'm sure it has to do with a f***ing hashtag or something, or he's going to grab some more people, I hope. Way to go, Jordan, that's why you get paid the big dollars. Right, exactly, that's perfect. We have a top 10 John Boats slash Andy's Tiny Tins for you, a new one, because we got, the old one just wasn't living up to what it used to be. We got some names in there that are going to get booted out, they're going to get kicked out, thrown in the f***ing dumpster, it's going to be over with, done. Take your aluminum boat, throw it in a bin, and make a Bud Light can out of it. That's what you're going to do. All right, here we go. Top 10, here we go. Number 10, Crestliner. Crestliner made the list. You know why Crestliner made the list? Because I needed something to be about. That's why we put Crestliner on here. Jordan wanted me to have something that pisses me off, so let's put Crestliner on here. Why did Crestliner make me mad? Because in V bottoms, like that one over there, that transom's rotted out, I guarantee it. Not so much probably on the flat boat, though. Their flat boat at one time was kind of like the Ranger flat boat that they made or John boat or tin boat, whatever you want to call all this stuff that I'm talking about today. That has since gone down the way and off to another world. The new Crestliner, I don't think quality wise is where it needs to be, but it made the top 10. So I'm not a fan of Crestliner. I never have been a fan of Crestliner. I've been a fan of the money I've made off of Crestliner. That's about why they made the list. Thank you Crestliner. All right. Number nine, Alumacraft. People are, well, Alumacraft, they've been around forever. They have been around forever. They made great boats back in the day. They made the ones that your dad or your grandpa went and bought, and you put the goddamn 15 horse on it. You broke every single rib on it. It literally was going like this, down the river. And yes, you know it, it leaked and you caught your bluegills out of it. Yes, ever since then, <whistles> getting worse. I know guys that had them and literally four trips broke, 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 broke. Welded, broke. All the welds broke. But I put them in front of Crestliner because I like Alumacraft just that much more. I like that Alumacraft just that much more. Why? Because my dad had one, had a 15 horse on it, had a deck on it about this big, and I stood on that deck with my little handheld Minn Kota backwards, sticking that way so I could go catch bass. That's what I started in. That's why Alumacraft's on this list, because my dad had one in a 15 horsepower Johnson. So there, that's my little little moment for today. All right, number eight, tracker. I put the tracker grizzly here. We're talking the grizzly here, right? The bad grizzly. The one that Neil had, the dinghy, the 14 something with a 25 Merc on it. They hit so hard, the Merc tried coming off. Transom didn't break. Good boat, quality boat. Um, I don't think we even broke a, well, yeah, we broke some welds on the back, back by the transom. Um, we just buzzed them up and he sold that boat. It had a kind of a decent fishing deck on it. I would say if you're not gonna put a trolling motor on it, you're just gonna go fishing. The thing I didn't like about it, how far forward you sat with a short tiller. There's a lot of long stretches, no turning type of deals with it. The really high boxes had to step over the first box. Should have cut the damn box out, had a straight walk through right to the deck. But I think Tracker deserves to be on this list, so I put him at eight. And I believe that that Tracker Grizzly would make a suitable boat at an affordable price for somebody. So you can go to your local, probably Cabela's or probably Bass Pro and find one of them, maybe. Or you can go to Jetta Marine, but Toby says he can't get any, so maybe Toby doesn't have any. But if Toby's got one, go see Toby at Jetta and get yourself a Tracker Grizzly. Maybe he doesn't even sell them anymore. I don't know. Anyway, number seven, Lund. Now, you, you, you're putting the Lund flat bottom on this list? You, you gave me the option of the Lund flat bottom, right? The Lund modified V, the one I'm thinking of? Is that what I'm thinking? Yeah. Yeah, the modified V. Yeah, okay. I'm just making sure that you weren't trying to scour something else in there because you didn't give me any models or anything. You just said Lund. All right, so yeah, Lund's at seven. Um, the, everybody knows I don't really pre, I don't like the Lund bass. I don't like the Lund bass. I don't like how it's rigged. I don't like that. Some of the Lund stuff that was pre, let's say 2018, 18 probably, transom problems. Um, they did have some transom problems, rotted out wood, but that's all gone now. So I think, I think Lund's a good spot at seven. I think they're, I think it's a, it's a little bit higher quality. Sorry, a little mint. Uh, a little bit higher quality than the tracker. Uh, a name that's 
solidified in the north here probably is probably one of the best 10 10 style bolts ever built but they're not on andy's list they're like seven so there you go number six here we go you ready you want to call it low you want to call it low you want to call it low e what the hell you want to call it jordan low low let's call it low today all right so low and i made number six why did i put them there just because i had one i had a low i had a low i beat the living crap out of the low rough neck low rough neck um was a really good boat and uh I, I liked it i had a 15 56 i think it was i think i put a 50 horse on it which was illegal so but it was a fast boat it could handle it no problem i love the split bench in the back had the opening real easy to use um i took out the center step walk through big deck it was perfect carpeted it floor they, they made a quality boat i mean they was it a great boat? No. Was it quality? Yeah. Did you break some stuff? Yeah. But did it fall apart like the Illumicraft? No. Uh-uh. It didn't. So that's why I went with number six with low. Number five, getting into top five. Ready, Jordan? You got music for top five? Can we do like a top five countdown? And number five. Should we do that? You're not going to do that. You're going to piss me off. I'm going to look for it. You're not going to do it. All right. Number five, Legendcraft. I did a video on Legendcraft a while ago, way long time ago. I still believe they're a top five tin boat in today's market. They're affordable. Um, they run hard, they, they make them out of heavier gauge steel or heavier gauge aluminum. I think we found that out, Jordan, right? They're a little bit heavier built boat. Um, can take some abuse. They run nice, they run, uh, I talked to the owner. At that time he was back ordered, so I'm sure he's still back ordered now. Um, they were an affordable boat with a 50 horse on it, or 40, I think it was, wasn't it, Jordan? Wasn't that 14 something with a 40? Or 16. 16 with a 40, yeah, 16, uh, just 60, like, yeah, it was just a 16 footer with a 40 horse tiller on it. But I think they came option with like a jack plate. There was a jack plate option yeah. with these. Yeah, yeah. so they, they're kind of built next level for jack plates for the little setback. Um, it's just a good boat. If you haven't checked out Legendcraft, go check out Legendcraft and just give them a ding, click, slide, take a look. See, I haven't done that in a while. It's coming back, it's coming back. We're getting into the boating season, so I'm gonna get some stuff. Some people hate that, you know that? My whistles, and they don't like that. Whatever, we don't care, whatever. So yeah, Legendcraft number five. Go take a look at them. Go, go take a look, see what you think. Number four, War Eagle. War Eagle is a heavy boat, built well. There's a lot of them up here. Service a lot of them. I don't see a lot of problems with it. Now, somebody out there may have had a lot of War Eagle and got pissed off, didn't like it, whatever. Comment about it, all right? Comment about it. But I really like the War Eagle look. I like how they, I just like their walkthrough style. I like how heavy they are. I like how they're built. They're not the fastest boat by any means, um, but I know there was a, there was a, 19, 19 foot with a 90, I think you could put on. Or it might have been. I think it was 19 foot with a 90 on it back in the day. Walk through big front deck. It was it was cool. Um, number three, Havoc. I put Havoc at number three. They were my number one last time, were they not? Two. Number two. Who was number one? Two. Oh, okay. Um, Havoc. Um, number three. Only reason being, I've had a couple through come through here, and some of the craftsmanship that I'm seeing. Not necessarily hull, but accessories to the boat, like rub rails, um, some welds underneath the deck, um, just finishing cleanup. The finishing just wasn't top two for me when I came down to it. It was like, I, I, I still think they're probably one of the fastest flats built or John boats built, um, especially with their race stuff. I mean, I don't think you can beat it. Uh, but when it came to some fishing stuff and some of the other stuff that we did, we did bring a couple of them here. Uh, there was there were some issues, there was some floor wrinkling issues there was some missed rivets there was uh, or i think it was welds or rivets in the floor on a couple of them there, there it was some stuff that was like eye candy to me but probably to the everyday person maybe not going to notice it or see it or be okay with it one of the customers that did come in here was pretty pissed off with how it was um but they, it's all settled after it was all done i don't know he's probably he's pretty happy with it now but um so they they, they were at number three uh, i still think they're a great boat i still think it's a great company um just the eye candy stuff that goes up. Number two, XL. I put XL at number two. Um, I did a lot of looking at XL after, in between the last video and this one, I did see some, I actually stopped. There's a dealer up north here I looked at. I did stop and look at the boats, kind of tire kicking, you know, do, 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 look at this, you know, let's take a look at this stuff. Uh, I was pretty happy with the welds. I was pretty happy with how clean they were. The rigging was probably an eight out of 10 when it came to rigging wires and stuff like that. Um, not much loom, and, I, and I'm not a, I'm not a fan of loom because loom boats water no water holds inside loom wrecks shit, makes slimy mess you know just it's not me it's like a jordan jordan bug bug jordan right here see him see him you got a bug coming at you you get him no nope. damn it all right i'll try that again sorry bugs are coming out um 
So the XL made number two, I was pretty happy with how they laid out. I was happy with the construction, I was happy. The thing that pisses me off about all these flat boats though, they're not setting them up for trolling motors. And I understand some of these boat companies aren't doing that, but when, when you got trolling motors and they're stowed and they're rigged in the trolling motor, like, here, I'm just gonna make, like, this is the front of my boat here. See this, Jordan? Is this the front of my boat right here? See this, how nice this is? I, the trolling motor is sticking out over here on my flat boat. You know what I mean? You, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, can you see this beautiful 3D high dollar thing I got going on here? There's gonna be a lot of beeps in this one, Jordan. It's gonna cost me a lot of money. Um, but this one here, you got, I, I hate this because they don't set it up so you can just stow the trolling motor correctly and stow it so it stays in the boat so you don't clean it off. First off, when I got a John boat, I'm gonna run it into everything. I'm gonna hit trees, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit people, jet skiers, you know, hey, here comes the river fleet, let's run them over. No, I'm not, but when the trolling motor's sticking out, you hit, you hit trees, you hook the head, it falls off, it's not, it's bad. It pisses me off that we can't get it so that trolling motors are rigged, trolling motor brackets fit so everything lays beautifully inside the boat. Inside, so we're not cleaning stuff off. That's the thing that pisses me off. But that leads us to number one, Jordan. You know who number one is today? You do. Why? Because you typed this up and I told you which one was number one. Number one is Gator Tracks. Gator Tracks all the way. Um, the Gator Tracks flat bottom, the Gator, Gator Tracks tin, his big boat, small boats, Gator Tracks stand, lifetime warranty, no questions asked. He's not going to bullshit you. He's going straight forward, builds the best boat. Gator Tracks, Gator Tracks, Gator Tracks is number one. Um, and it's just, if you've never seen one, you've never been in one, uh, I'd get yourself in one. You know, if you're around the plant, go, go take a look. Go take a look at the construction. Go take a look at how they're built. Go take a look at everything that they do at Gator Tracks. Um, like I said before, when I, when I was talking to those people down at Gator Tracks, they're the ones that told me that this is your job. This is what you do. You, you weld the stuff. You put the interior and in, you put the rig. That is the kind of construction that's there. Um, it's your boat, you build it. So that to me means a lot. Um, Gator Tracks number one, construction probably, uh, rigging. I don't know about the paint. I really don't care about the paint. Paint's gonna fall off, don't run it into stuff. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, but when it comes to construction, reliability, when it comes to warranty, when it comes to whatever, uh, Gator Tracks is definitely gonna be there. It's gonna be number one. You're gonna buy a boat, you're gonna spend some extra money, which in this industry, people are gonna have to swallow the fact that it is not a cheap deal. There's nothing cheap about this industry anymore. Um, we, we're, we're seeing a lot of it now, it's coming back. So pre-COVID, pre-COVID was like a spike of, it didn't matter what it cost, I would say. And then we got into COVID and everybody got some money and they just kept going with that. And now that is falling off, I think, and that has to do with where we're at in the, re uh, in the economy. Um, and they're just not, they're, they're bringing us stuff that you shouldn't own and we're throwing a lot of it in the bin. There's a lot of bin material going on right now. Um, but Gator Tracks is going to cost more money. XL is probably going to cost, Havoc's going to cost more money. Yeah, you can go get in a tracker or a, probably a, a Law or Low or Lowy, whatever you want to call it, uh, at affordable price. Um, and, and go fishing, but it's gonna be junk and, and you're gonna beat it up and you're gonna put it on the trailer one day and the floor is gonna go because you're gonna go through, the trailer's gonna push it up and you're not gonna get that with Gator Tracks, Excel or Havoc. You mean, uh, you, and if you do, call them and they're gonna, they're gonna stand behind it. That's just how it is. That's why they're the top three. Um, Legend Craft be the same way, I feel. I mean, I probably could have put Legend Craft at number four and bump War Eagle if I really wanted to. Um, the only thing I'm just putting Legend Craft there just because I don't think a lot of people know about it. It's just not, did you see that bug? That's your same bug. You saw him, didn't you? Um, so it could have been a switch there. Could have been a switch there. I could put Tracker up 7 too. I could put them where Lund is. Um, cause you, you, but I think when it comes to affordable tins, I think we did Tracker. And Tracker was probably the most affordable tin you could go out and buy and put a motor on and go fishing with. I think it was extremely affordable. So once again, Johnny does it again. He gets you that affordable way to get in fishing. Um, so there you go, that tracker will probably be the most affordable. Um, not gonna last the longest by any means, but it's gonna probably get you on the water for many years and whatever. You always can grab the buzz box and fill some cracks and take care of it. But top three, Havoc, XL, Gator Tracks for sure. Um, I'm, I could move Legend Craft to four. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. Um, but Jordan always asks me this stuff when I'm doing something else, so I gotta like chicken scratch it quick. So. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown, you ready Jordan? Number 10, Crestliner. Number nine, Luma Craft. Number eight, Johnny Morris's Tractor. Uh, number seven, Lund. Number six, 
Low, low, lowy, whatever you want to call it. There it is. Uh, number five, Legend Craft, which could be number four. Number four is War Eagle, which could be number five. Uh, Havoc's number three. XL's number two. Gator Tracks is number one. Um, what is the smallest Gator Tracks that they make? Do you remember? Is it 16 or the 15? You'll try and make whatever you want. You'll probably build me a 12 footer if I want it. Yeah, that's what I think. Um, so that's another reason. You can call down there and customize your boat. They'll build it for you. They don't care. Um, so there you go. I mean, that's that's the deal right there. That's what you want, right, Jordan? Top 10, boom, lot and top. Got anything else you want me to talk about? Can we talk about subscribing? No? We don't need to subscribe no more? Yeah, thanks to the thanks. I'm thanking the South Africans who watched our last video. This, the, the last video, guys, the South Africans, that thing had blown up. I mean, South Africans responded. They, call, they called my shop. I called down there. It's $57. $57, Jordan. I, I, are you paying for that phone call? That's why you used your phone. Yeah, I know. You intentionally wanted to use my phone. And, and I, I was like, why do you want to use my phone? But yeah, I understand now. Great. That was perfect. Yeah, we called the South Africa. We've been in contact with South Africa. Uh, it is a whole new world down there. So thank you to those people who acknowledged what we did. And thank you to you guys for commenting and getting engaged with those people. Um, it, it's, a, it, it's a big industry. It's a huge industry. It's bigger than what we think. And we're going to find out more. Trust me. Um, that South African market is just its own deal. And I think we need to explore that market as U.S. citizens. Explore what they do down there. And we're going to bring you to that, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I need more subscribers. Like I said before, if your wife hasn't subscribed, make sure she subscribes. If your son hasn't subscribed and he's five years old, I want him subscribing. I, we add it, we beep. Jordan misses a couple things, but your son will love me. It'll be a great deal. Okay, be cool. There we go. That's our day. We're ready to go back to work. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for doing everything you're doing. Thank you for blowing my stuff up, for making us what we are. And for watching as many times as you do, it's, it's unbelievable. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you. As always, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to witness the madness that now every South African is soon to say, speed, money, no brakes. We, as a crew, are out. See you!